mustard is a European weed that's actually been on the North American continent for a, a almost 200 years, 150 years. It wasn't really recognized as a threat to a lot of our habitats until sometime in the 1970s. Well, garlic mustard is a biennial. Biennial <laughs> means um, it's, it's you know, about annual plants. Annual is, you know, it has its entire life cycle in one year. So it, you know, sprouts, it grows, it, you know, flowers and produces fruits in one season. A biennial, um, like garlic mustard, it will sprout and it will exist, you know, low to the ground as a rosette, on, in the case of garlic mustard, as a rosette for one year and then its second year is when it sends up its stalk flowers, fruits, and then it dies. So it has a two year life cycle instead of just one. And it's not like a perennial that comes back year after year after year. So first off, uh, you wanna look for the rosette. So they start as a cluster of small leaves with scalloped edges. Um, that's the, the first year of growth. This is a rosette. So it's just a cluster of leaves. And then the second year um, of its life, it sends up a stalk, a tall stalk. Um, the leaves get a little, little more pointy, um, and then it develops white flowers, small white flowers, four petals, um, and then they, you know, develop into seed pods called saliques. So they're long, skinny seed pods. Um, one of the best ways to identify it, um, if you're not sure if it's garlic mustard, is to take the leaf and crush it up because it. It has like a garlicky smell, which is why it's called garlic mustard. It's a type of mustard that smells like garlic. Um, the rosettes start sprouting in you know March, April of um, the following year. So they'll drop the seeds um, June, July, and then the following March, April, um, you start to see little little sprouts of you know the rosette seedlings. They start to flower. Um, March, April again of the following year, so that's the, of its second year of life, it sends up its stalk and flowers and then uh, once it produces seeds, it dries out and the seed pods pop open, release the seeds and then the cycle just starts all over again. Uh, this is from Europe. Um, there it was, a, it was a food source. They used it in salads because of its garlicky flavor probably. It was planted more like you plant herbs in your herb garden. They planted it around their houses and would bring it in for salads. And now it's escaped the garden and is out in the forest. <laughs> well, it's changing the soil um, chemistry. But where it grows it makes it less favorable for native species so um, it, they can't fill in and grow as well. And you can see where it is. It just takes over. You end up with a monoculture of garlic mustard. Monoculture is where a single species takes over a, a large area and basically reduces species diversity. So you, you have a lot of one and not many of the others. You can find garlic mustard pretty much everywhere. Um, it likes disturbed areas, um, rich forests, um, basically anywhere that it can have moisture. We found it growing in fields, in sandy areas. So it's very tolerant of a wide range of conditions. It can tolerate, you know, darker uh, forested areas or it can do well in, you know, highlight situations. It's found roadside, so you can find it all along roads. Um, they found it as, you know, in Killens Pond um, and Cape Henlopen, which is, you know, beach area. They found it at the campground. Um, so, I mean, you can find it all across the state. It's more concentrated, you know, for the further north you go, um, so you know you're more likely to find it up in White Clay or Brandywine Creek. Um, which one do when you wanna when you wanna pull the garlic mustard that that um, the second year plant? You wanna get down in the um, where the root is, and you wanna pull it all out. It comes out fairly well because it doesn't have a, a, a good root source because it. Um, expends most of its energy on getting um, the stock up high. So the root source is not very deep. So it's easy to pull out, as you can see. Um, and then you want to bag it, because you do not want to leave um, it on the, the ground, because there's enough energy in the plant to um, seed and um, re-sprout. So you just continue on. And here, I'll just give you an example if you pull it incorrectly. 
it'll look like that. Well, that's actually the, more like, that's not how I did it. But yeah, so you don't see the root and you got it on, you should probably like search for the root and it's just down in there. You pull that out and it comes out. You wanna get all the root out as much as you can. Then you just bag it. And that's that. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seeds in each of these. Matter of fact, some people have said that they're, they've actually counted, so not me, <laughs> somebody counted uh, thousands of seeds in some of them. But these little ones, like this, even are, look at the one Kate has here. <laughs> you can find ones. some of these little yeah. suckers, and if you really want to get rid of it, if you're really in your yard, you want to get rid of garlic mustard, yeah, focus on these big guys. But you got to get these guys too, because that one might only produce 20 seeds, but that's 20 seeds that could grow into potentially 20 plants the following year. So you've got to get them all. There are many, many, many places, especially south of the canal, where we do not have any garlic mustard. And for people who live even in southern Newcastle County, if they learn this plant, they can keep it out of, off their property from even getting started. Here in White Clay Creek, we're way past that. We're basically doing triage. We're kind of coming to areas we've focused on and primarily this older woods patch above uh, Pleasant Hill Road, about 40 acres is the area we've started and focused on in this park. Cornell University has been working on a biocontrol for this that would find a European insect that would be very specific to garlic mustard that would help control it. Until that happens, we've got to focus on high quality, rich wildflower habitats in our parks and protect them because garlic mustard is capable of killing a lot of those plants over time. This is the classic understory invasive plant. Is it changing our forest canopy? Is it a threat to oak trees? Not really, but it's a real threat to all of our, the wildflowers that uh, many of us grew up and love in, in the mid-Atlantic.